Hey, welcome back to Tech Advances. Let's compare the similarities and differences between the Bose 700, Beat Studios, and Sony XM4s. Now, just a forewarning before we get into the video. In this video, I actually compare the newer Bose 700 and Sony XM4s to an older model of the Beats Studios. Truth be told, Beats really hasn't done much in terms of upgrading their software, firmware, hardware in general over the last five or six years. So I didn't find it necessary to compare a newer version of Beats to the newer headphones from Sony and Bose. I also just never found it necessary to purchase another copy or another version of the new Beats Studios because again, the ones that I purchased in 2014 are very similar to the ones from 2020. Now, if you feel yourself getting upset at me for comparing older Beats to newer Sony and newer Bose headphones, then the Beats marketing and business model and advertisements have really got you wrapped around their fingers. Truth be told, Beats are just not that good. And if you feel that they are, if you're upset at me for comparing older Beats rather than newer ones to the newer Sony and Bose headphones, then you really need to reassess because the Beats just have not been that good and that's why they're kind of getting phased out if you take notice of what's going on in the industry, especially with the AirPods Max coming in. Now before we get into the contents of this video, if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up to show your support. Tech Advances is a smaller YouTube family compared to the other tech channels on YouTube, but we're growing. Right now we're at about 270 subscribers slowly growing each video. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's get to a thousand subscribers, hopefully in the next few months and then exponentially from there. That's the goal, that's what I hope. I do all sorts of tech reviews, so be sure to check out my channel, subscribe, but let's get back into this video. All right, in 2020, I think that it's important to make a video like this, going over some of the best headphones in the market at the moment. Just because the headphone game is kind of starting to get a little crowded. There's a lot of uh, competitors in, in this kind of market at the moment. So we've got the XM4s, the Bose 700s, and then some Beats Studios. Now, right off the bat, the Beats Studios are about five or six years old. I bought these for $400, I think like maybe 2015, 2014, something like that. The Bose 700s are $339, and then the Sony XM4s are $278. These two headphones right here are going to blow the, the Beats Studios out of the water when it comes to noise canceling. The Bose 700 has a noise canceling feature that you can adjust. So you can put it at a volume or a level of 10. You can put it at a level of one, 10 being the highest in intensity. So if you're traveling and you wanted headphones that can have a higher intensity for the noise canceling, you're able to adjust the bows based on what you're doing. That's a really cool feature that these ones have. Now the Sony XM4s are known for their noise canceling. They're known as the best active noise canceling in the market. And I really agree with that because you, I, I don't know, I, I just have not been able to find any headphones that do better with noise canceling than the XM4s. The Beats, they've got noise canceling and it, at first in 2015, 2014 sounded or seemed amazing because at that time we didn't have the level of noise canceling that we do now. But in 2020, these are definitely outdated. These ones, what they do with the noise canceling, it just seems that Bose boosts up the bass and kind of washes out the sound that way. They've got thicker materials for the ear cups in general compared to the Bose or the Sony's. So overall, the noise canceling is not the best. Now let's talk about the bass a little bit. The Beats at the time did really well with their bass. And I think that I've heard Beats these days, newer Beats, and they do really well as well. But compared to the Bose, compared to the XM4s, it just seems like the Beats are missing something. Apple had picked up this product and put it under their own catalog for a while, but it seems that because of the AirPods Max being released now, Beats are something that'll be washed away from Apple. And I think that with headphones like this going on these days, I think that Beats slowly will get phased out unless they come out with a product that really captivates the market. They kind of need to at this point. Beats kind of were the trendsetters in terms of headphones for a mid-level market for general consumers. If you're an audiophile, you will not agree with me on that because you know that there's Sennheisers and all these other brands that are above Beats that set the trends. But for the mid-level markets that these guys capture, 
Beats really started everything off in like 2009, 2010. And from there we had the, the babies, if you will, the Bose and the Sonys. Now let's talk about battery life really quickly. The Sonys have 30 hour battery life. If you take off the noise canceling, 38 hours. The Bose have 20 hours for their battery life. And then the Beats have 18 hours for the studios. So really the, the XM4s take the cake on this one. They do way better with the battery life than the other two do. Now with the Beats, or sorry, I'm confusing myself at this point. With the XM4s, you are able to charge this for about 10 minutes and you get three hours of, no, you get five hours of battery life. So charge it for 10 minutes, five hours of battery life. With the Beats, you charge these for 10 minutes and you get 3.5 hours of battery life. With the, I said Beats here, didn't I? With the Bose, you get 3.5 hours of battery life with a 10 minute charge. And then with the Beats, you could charge these for 30 minutes and you get like two hours, something like that. Now, what I've noticed is all of these last a very long time, but for some reason, I don't know if this is something because of psychology or because I've thought this way for the last five, six years of these headphones, it just seems like the Beats last much longer with their battery life than these do, but you've got to keep something in mind. Both of these headphones use some sort of artificial intelligence. They have artificial intelligence chips in them to process different components of headphones. So we'll just leave it at that. I don't want to get too into detail with those. The Beats don't really have that. They don't have any sort of artificial intelligence. And I think that's why maybe battery life, 18 hours, 30 hours. These are definitely lasting longer, but for some reason, the psychology behind these makes me think that these last longer, even though that's not the case. Now that we mentioned artificial intelligence, that's something to note as well. These two have artificial intelligence, the, the Beats don't. The new Beats do to some degree, but Sony does really well with them. Bose do really well with them. Beats seems like they're trying to catch up. So what I want to do is put these to the side. Okay, let me just make sure they don't fall. And let's talk about these two specifically. Between the Sony's and the Bose, if I was to give audio a title, or if I was to give one of these a title for audio, it would definitely be the Sony's. Sony's blew me out of the water. They kind of, I didn't expect them to have such a crisp and clear sound and also mix in a good level of bass. I didn't expect that from these. The Bose, I actually was thinking they would do as well as the XM4s, but they did not. They actually sounded a little worse than the XM4s. They sounded more quiet and that was with varying levels of noise canceling. I tried to adjust my settings to see why I was at max volume on my phone and the bows just did not seem like they were loud enough or crisp enough or clear enough. Now they were definitely clear compared to the Beats, but compared to the XM4s, the bows did not do that well. Comparing the price point, 278 for the, the Sony's and 339 for the bows, you would assume bows would do better, but that is not the case. Sony did way better. In terms of design, I really like Sony's design. They have like this uh, turtle shell design is what I want to call it. That's not really what it's actually called, but just seems, excuse me, seems nice and compact. I really love the color that Sony has right here. And that same color is what the 700s have all around. I love the look. I love the design. Just don't love the sound. So if you're somebody that's trying to shop based on the look or design, you would go with these, the Bose 700s. If you are somebody that's looking to get the most out of your headphones, then you would choose the Sony XM4s. Both of these have really cool cases. The XM4s actually uh, bend or break down in a really cool way and you can put it in the case really well. And they look really nice and sleek when you've got them laid down like this. The bows don't do that, you can't bend them, but they have a really cool way to adjust the height where you just kind of move it up and down along this aluminum bar. So that looks really cool. I really like the design of the Bose, but sound wise, Sony takes the cake. So these are the headphones that I use at the gym. I have these on at the gym and that's why they're kind of getting all messed up at this point. And the Sony's are actually my go-to's now. I use these if I'm trying to listen to something, any kind of new album that comes out, or if I just want to have a, a, a listening session by myself and just relax and drown out the noise, I go with the Sony's. And these are what I would use to travel as well. 
I think I will be returning the bows. I originally planned to keep both of them based on what I was doing, but I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not really satisfied with this product for the price point. If this was $180, this would be a totally different review, but for almost double that price and more than the XM4s, I, I am a little dissatisfied, if you will. So if you're from Bose and you're watching this, contact me, maybe I can help you create a better headphone for a, a cheaper price going forward, I don't know. Now, the only one that I didn't compare these to is the AirPods Max. That is a completely different beast, but that's also $550. So yeah, for half the price, you get the XM4s. And a lot of YouTubers, including myself, are still going to use the XM4s as the daily drivers. So there you have it. That's the comparison between all of them. Let me know which, which ones you like. If you like the beats, let me know in the comments below. If you think that I said something that was not right, let me know in the comments below. And I feel like I might get a lot of hate comments from the audiophiles that are saying that Beat shouldn't even be on this list or none of these should be on this list and Sennheisers or Hyphy Mins or whatever it is should be on the list. Let me know what you think below. Thank you for watching this video and on to the next video.